Right, how do children affect mortgages and mortgage affordability? This is something that I don't actually see anybody talking about, but most people have kids. Most people want to, when they have kids, maybe want to move from a flat to a house. But how does it all work when you've got kids involved, when you've got child benefit, for example, when you've got nursery cost, how does that all affect mortgage affordability? So let's look at it. I'm going to run through some various scenarios and we'll take it there. Let's get down to it and run some scenarios. Now, I'm going to run a couple of scenarios. One, a couple with no kids. Scenario number two is a couple with two kids and they get some child benefit to reflect that. Scenario number three is a couple with three kids. And scenario number four is a couple that have got two kids, but they've also got nursery costs. So we we'll run that through and I've basically putting some uh, dummy figures in there and they're going to remain the same for each scenario. OK, the only thing that's going to change is obviously the number of children and the child benefit allowances. Right. So you've got Payam here. He's a first time buyer, terraced house in the southeast looking to purchase around three hundred twenty five thousand pounds. With 15% deposit, this figure is important. This is the figure that we're looking for, 276250. Going for a 25-year mortgage, he's a little bit younger than me. He's 44 years old and uh, he's employed on £35,000 a year, permanent, permanently employed. Um, he's got £3,000 credit card debt, which is not going to be paid. And we've got a potentially a car loan of £250, which is not going to be paid with the balance of £8,000. I've made an assumption around the council tax of 225,000, uh, pounds and buildings insurance of 30 pounds. Then the owner's data figures that our system uses has brought in some data figures for this scenario. OK, so here's the utilities and so forth. And they're going to remain the same. Sometimes they'll move up depending on the children, uh, number of children we've got. And there's the lucky wife, the lucky wife. She's 44 years old, married to me, lucky her and annual basic salary of 28,000 pounds. Right. She has got uh, a few things. She's got a student loan of £50 a month and a credit card which is going to be paid of a £1,000, uh, you know, a £1,000 balance. So, scenario number one. This is the affordability based on scenario number one, which is basically they don't have any kids. So, there's two of them. Remember, we were looking at the 276,250, 276,250 mortgage. Now, Plenty of lenders are coming back as affordable, okay? So you've got various lenders and some of them are specialists. And remember, I have not taken into account anything else. No criteria checks, no property checks, no, you know, uh, residency checks, nothing apart from affordability. So this is not advice. I'm just giving you some indications of what's available and also how having kids will affect affordability, right? So this is not me saying go to lender number one, lender number two, because there are lots of adjustments. There'll be adjustments around the loans that I've put in. There'll be adjustments around the area, the vicinity. If it's going to be in Scotland, it'll be different. Wales will be different. There are lots of scenarios. Some lenders will take the credit card into account. Others will not take it into account. Some lenders are better if the term is 20 years. Others will be better if it's 30 years. So let's, let's not, you know, get too muddled up into it. I just wanted to give you an idea. So 335,000. And you remember, we're looking at 276. So quite a number of lenders are coming back as affordable. So let's go to scenario number two. And that's with the two kids, right? The two kids. And let's just put in, uh, I don't know, control F. And let's put the child benefit figure. So the child benefit figure is 2,075 for two children. Now, I've made an assumption on this. The children are under the age of 13. And that's important because if you go over the age of 13, some lenders will not take into account the child benefit for that child. Okay. So remember, we were looking at the 276,250. So we've got Nationwide coming back on a two year or a tracker deal for 262,900 on a five year or on their specific help in hand product that they've got. 
which is for first time buyers and you've got to meet other eligibility things, um, they, they could go up to 342100. Um, you've got a court coming back at 327 and then you've got a specialist lender, you wouldn't really go there, it's only really if you've got some specific problems there because the rates will be higher. And you've got the various other lenders, again, coming back, you know, there are there about. So there's still a number of options there with two kids and you've got some child benefit. Let's go for three kids, okay? So we've got three kids and again, let's put the child benefit part in there. Let's see how much. That child benefit part goes up to £2,902 and let's look at affordability. Remember, we're looking at that 276, 250 figure and nationwide affordability. You still can do it on a five year, potentially on the helping hand product. And you've got a number of other lenders coming in still uh, affordable um, around the mark. So, you know, they're all they're all there. They're about some of them like Halifax will give you more on a five year than a two year. And you can see that the trend here in that West also more on a five year than a two year HSBC and so forth. So they've all come back affordable. So let's now make it more real life scenario. Let's make it with two kids. OK, so we've got two kids in there, but. We've also got childcare nursery fees of £700 a month. Now, I've had two kids and I know that's about right, you know, and I know you've got some childcare vouchers or free hours and so forth. But let's just assume it's £700 a month and let's look at that. Remember, we were looking at the 276 figure and look how much it's decimated affordability. Now, I'll talk to you a little bit about this, but essentially, look, 171223 thousand the maximum out there and that's on that specific helping hand product so it doesn't fit everybody so when you look at that you know 195 and we're looking at 276 so that's a bit depressing isn't it when it comes to nursery cost it really hammers affordability and i think it's outrageous personally as someone who's had two kids who've gone through nursery um it's almost like paying a mortgage that's absolutely right however the lenders need to think a little bit more carefully about how they treat people and how they're penalizing that traditional family setup um, and how they are not making things easy for people. Now, I'm not saying give these people uh, mortgages that it's not unaffordable, but there are things they can do. And let me give you some suggestions. They could, for example, say, right, the maximum someone's going to go in nursery before they get their 38 hours or they may have to go to school and then they start school is probably what four years maybe five years so why don't we look at a stepped approach for affordability so year one year two year three year four and we'll take a percentage off that um uh, nursery fees so if that nursery fees is 700 pounds maybe that will reduce uh, uh, slightly um, or you know that's not going to be for the term of the mortgage when you're working affordability out you're doing a term of 25 years 30 years okay well let's be honest depending on how old the children are and how long they're going to remain in that nursery um, nursery age then there should be some leniency or, or some assumptions made to help with affordability okay so and I think this is penetizing all those people and that's stopping a lot of people trying to move on or trying to refinance and certainly being worried about such things because as soon as they come and speak to someone like me I can do the numbers and I will say to them sorry it's not affordable with 700 pounds going out now there are things some lenders have done so if the nursery costs are going to stop um, within six months, for example, if, we, if they're going to go to school, for example, and it's a set time, so we know it's going to stop, you know, they're going to school, in, you know, it's in June, in September, they're going to school, then some lenders could um, effectively not uh, take it into account. Remember, if you're moving from one place to another, nursery costs might reduce. If you're going to get your 15 hours or 38 hours, nursery costs will reduce. So it's worth really, really discussing that with the broker because the broker can give you suitable advice. There are lots of lenders out there and they all look at affordability in a different way. Now, there are things you can do in terms of, remember I ran it on a 25 year term, so maybe you could stretch out the term. So yes, that monthly cost is heavy for the first few years. You you might have to stretch out the term to make it try to make it more affordable to increase the maximum loan and then maybe in the future when the kids 
uh, nursery costs are not there when you remortgage you can reduce that back up okay for example you can also look at on some remember we had some uh, a car loan there a credit card debt that wasn't being paid if you pay those off that's less money going out on a monthly basis and that will make a big difference and that's where a good broker comes in because you can run scenarios by them and they can look at it and go right what's the best situation can I increase the term can I pay off my existing debt um, how do I do that some lenders will take it into account regardless if you even if you say I'm gonna pay it off others will say look if it's showing on your credit report we'll take it into account others will say no that's fine as long as you say to us you're gonna pay it off before completion of the mortgage will allow you to do so so it's like I said that's why it's not just about whatever lender that comes up top and those lenders on you know those affordability calculators are still subject to credit score and underwriting and all sorts of things so it is just a very much a guide and it's a guide for us as well so it's not just because I know what I'm doing I know exactly what that lender is going to give it's very much dependent loan to values is affects affordability as well someone who's looking to put five percent deposit down would probably get less than someone who's putting 25 percent deposit down incomes are so important okay so in our scenario we did a 35,000 pounds income and a 28,000 pounds income now those income scenarios make a big difference if those incomes are lower then dramatically sometimes they decrease okay and also some people get other types of income benefits overtimes commissions um, there's all sorts of bank work if they're nursing their pension contributions are a lot higher with some lenders so it's not you know it's not a fine art you know that's why you should really discuss this with a mortgage broker because they can run through the various scenarios but I hope I've given you some insight into how affordability works with children if you have got any questions by all means uh, run it down you know write it down down there and I will obviously in the comments I will always try to come back to you guys with the comments like and subscribe as always if you've enjoyed this video share it with people that you think might be interested and I'll catch you on the next one take care the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.